on the all new Breeze 93.9. Where your go to jam is always coming up at 6.48. Let's uh, go to the Zoom room and get from the Department of Corrections, Major Anton Uggen. Good morning, Major. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Thanks for joining us so early. Uh, first, let's just start. I want to, on a personal level, how are you feeling about uh, the news here that our governor has uh, uh, tested positive for COVID-19? And just, uh, you know, I want to make sure you're okay as we're in the midst of this big surge. So first off, how are you, Major? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. For asking. You have kids going to school? Uh, yes, I have two. I have one going to Mark Carmel and the other to Notre Dame. Oh, okay, so then, so they just started, right? Notre Dame just started. Uh, Notre Dame had their orientation yesterday. Right, uh, I see. Our first class is next week, and then Mark Carmel was yesterday. Are you doing a face to face or um, remote learning? Uh, I think for Mark Carmel it's a face to face, and for Notre Dame it's a hybrid. I so see. So be in class a few days out of the week, and the rest will be home. Right. Online. All right. Good to know. So, and how you feel about that, uh, Major? You. You confident in the uh, school's uh, measures? Well, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I know the, the measures that, are, are, that they're taking is uh, basically universal. Right. Um, a lot of it just depends, I guess, sometimes on the kids, if they're going to be able to comply with all the requirements for uh, eight hours a day or for the days they're there. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a tough, it's a tough situation for everybody. Right. Yeah. How old's your uh, Mount Carmel student? Uh, she's 12. Right. And so you have that conversation major about, Hey, when you go to school, don't be touching everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All the time. I mean, right. she's got a bag of wipes, hand sanitizers, <laughs> alcohol, uh, six different masks. We even got her a little portable fan because <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the, uh, Mark, Mark Carmel has decided to, I guess, turn off the air pumps. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so there's no air guns in the classroom. So, my daughter has a small little fan to go mm -hmm. with her. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Prepared. Wow, prepared. can you imagine? I mean, every school year, of course, the parents, we hear it. Oh, the list of supplies. I mean, this school year, though, wow. You're going to spend like 80 bucks on just, just hand supplies. sanitizer. and yeah. Uh, yeah, just like sanitizing stuff. One of the things on uh, the list for my son was a box of masks. <laughs> wow. That's different. Uh, so how much did you spend yeah. on that type of stuff, Major? Well, you know what? Honestly, I don't know, uh, Chris. Uh, my wife handles all those. <laughs> right? the it's above your pay grade, huh? <laughs> my pay grade. I just, I just bring home the money and where it goes. <laughs> I've just learned not to ask questions. I've just learned not to ask questions and just nod my head in agreement. So. <laughs> yeah. That you, and, and also the honey do list, right? Yeah. You ask yeah, more questions at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really ask questions. I, I mean, at work, I'm a major, but at home, uh, you're less than a my private. Daughter, my daughter's yeah, I'm in the private. I'm not even authorized to speak on behalf of anything really. <laughs> without getting the wife's permission. So you know, that's just that's just the way it goes. I've learned to deal with it. It is what it is, major. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> okay, now that we got everyone feeling sorry for you. <laughs> Let's get to a official business. What's uh, mm -hmm. the latest major? We know that the, you guys got tested over at the uh, prison, but what's uh, been happening there uh, since we last spoke? Well, um, well, on July 30th, we tested 195 staff, and all those that were tested came back negative. So that's a that's a good thing. We are working on the final plans for to test the inmates, all the 600 plus inmates and detainees, both in Manila and Aganya. So we're, we're working on that to finalize it. Probably by this week, they'll be tested. Um, the We have uh, some public health nurses coming in today for a site visit just to look at the outlay and the work with our uh, the, the management as far as the uh, flow. And so we're hoping to have that done soon. Um, once that's done, then we'll look at the incoming for the inmates. We have not had uh, incoming since a few months back, at least uh, so once we get this baseline and we get this thing squared away, then we'll uh, we'll work on the incoming for the inmates and the family. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, I mean, you know, other than that, we're just trying to hold down the fort and uh, 
protect our inmates as possible uh, as much as possible how, how is the how are the uh, inmates uh doing major are we seeing like a uh, heightened anxiety and, and stress is there an increase of like, maybe fights uh that type of stuff at the uh, prison no uh we haven't seen an increase in fights but of course the, the, the stress and the tension of uh, especially since there's no visitation right and they haven't had visitation for months uh, that's very stressful but you know they do get access to the phones uh basically to, to call their family uh the phone is basically unlimited right now so it's, they're not even being charged for it um uh, and they and then uh you know, management, they explain to the inmates why we're doing what we're doing. We've had the, the uh, warden and the other majors had uh, different meetings with the inmates. Again, just keeping them abreast of what's going on. And for the most part, they understand that we're just trying to protect them and their family and the staff of DOC from, from this uh, this invisible enemy, mm -hmm. as we right. call it. So how I just on average major just because I've never asked you this before, but how many like fights and stuff do you guys see in a an average day at DOC? Not necessarily a day. Uh, oh. Maybe maybe one a week. Maybe I mean there could be several weeks when there's no fights. Okay. Um, again, we still do our contraband checks and stuff, and I think last week we found a cell phone. Uh, found one cell phone, but. Uh, iPhone or yeah, what? Really, huh? Was it an iPhone or Samsung? You no, know, you know what? I don't. I don't. I didn't get a. I didn't see the final report on what it was. I just know they found it, and it was already turned over to GPD. Probably How that was the new iPhone. How does something like that though get in if yeah. if uh, you're not accepting incoming? And there's no uh, visitation. You know, yeah, I, you know, I. I mean, I. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, some of them could have been here for a while. And we uh, just never found it. Right. So mm -hmm. now. Uh, you know, other ones, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping it's not staff, but you just sometimes never know. Uh, what right. about the stuff that's going over the uh, fence? The contraband? We, we've had one or two, I think, in the last few weeks thrown over, but we got it. It got uh, landed in an area and no one was ever to retrieve it, so we end up finding it. We still have them. We still have those attempts. Mm -hmm. What are they throwing? Is anybody trying to throw over like hand sanitizer and, and wipes and stuff? Or is it just all, you know, crack and snuff? Mo most, most of it is tobacco products, mm. um, lighters, cigarette, Copenhagen. Uh, sometimes we'll find drugs. Sometimes we'll find drugs. Uh, I mean, one time we had a jar of uh, Donny De Nancy thrown over. So someone was craving Donny De Nancy. Mm, I wonder what kind uh, it was. Yeah, yeah so what kind was it? The, the red bottle, the one, the one is like sixteen bucks. Uh, the drizzle. Yeah. No, no, I don't think it was that one. Oh, that's good stuff there. <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask about, um, you know, with the surge in in uh, COVID cases on Guam, has there been any talks to test some of these arrestees that are coming in, and pretrial detainees over to the Hagatnia lockup? Because you just don't really yes. know, right? So one of the one of the things, uh, Sabrina, and our plan is that uh, they're looking at getting a uh, machine testing machine. The ones and again, I, I can't recall the name of it, but one of those machines that they use to test, like a um, rapid rapid testing type machine, like an yes, Abbott ID. Yeah, or? So, yeah. Right. And uh, so they want to get one for one or two for DOC, but I know one specifically for Aganya. Mm -hmm. so that when the overnighters come in the the nursing staff can go in and perform a test on them uh before we as part of our uh, processing uh the process that we use when we intake you have nursing staff so, in, in Aganya? yes we have uh, nursing staff in Aganya, and we have them in manila too right uh major we actually had a, a call here uh and, and I, logistically i don't know how this is going to work so i'm going to just uh, take this lady out a question about the testing that was uh conducted at the, the prison. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, go ahead. Hi, good morning, Major. Uh, I just I just heard that you tested your staff, or DOC staff, over a hundred of your staff. Was that a decision of the authority? Or, I mean, was that also um, logistically organized by the authority? What what authority? Are you talking about DOC or are you talking about Adelaide? DOC, yes. 
by DOC? Or was that left, uh, left to the employees to decide whether they want to be tested? Yeah, what was the... Was it the a mandatory testing or was it yeah. voluntary? Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. Anton? So, okay, so the director put out an order. It was a mandatory test. He wanted everybody to get tested. Uh, there were some that did not because for whatever, like they're on military drill. Uh, they were out already, maybe uh, personal issues and family issues. So some of them out of the 220 some employees, there was a few that didn't. Some of them that did not take it, um, they went to the community uh, outreach program and they took the test. Some of them went there. We're looking at when we test the inmates, uh, uh, prior to testing some of the inmates, some of the staff that missed the testing will also be allowed to take the test. But the director wanted to wanted everybody to take the test. I mean, I, I know uh, some were hesitant to take it. I mean, even I was, but Again, you know, we're trying to protect the staff and the inmates, and and so it was mandatory. But nobody was disciplined uh, for anyone that didn't take it. There was no discipline handed down, uh, you know. But uh, again, it was something the director ordered, and and you know, I agree. We we gotta we gotta test our employees. We gotta make sure they're safe. And and what better way when bringing the public health to our facility? I mean, we they didn't have to go outside and stand in long lines. They went into our facility. The whole thing took about three hours to get the staff there. It was a real smooth operation. And um, again, the ones that tested negative, I mean, it doesn't mean because you're negative that you can't get it the next day, obviously, uh, but we needed to start something. We needed to do a baseline. So yes, it was ordered. And uh, again, most of the staff took it. How many didn't? Uh, <laughs> Out of 195, maybe about 20, mm -hmm. but again, some of them are due to, they were out on military or other pre-approved yeah. leave and weren't able to make it in in time. So how many and were- some who just didn't want yeah, to take how it. many were just like, no, I don't want that thing up my nose? You know, I, I haven't heard of any, any straight out defiance of the order from the director. Okay. Uh, most of the ones that, that didn't take it, like I said, there was about a handful that didn't take it, but they already went out the next day and took one of the community testing mm -hmm. sites and they, they took the test there and they reported back, hey, sir, I took the test and, you know, this is our results. Okay, good, right. good to go. Th thank uh, you. Some of them, Ma'am? Some of them have been attended about two or three times because of the uh, contact tracing that took place mm. a few weeks back. So some of them even had more than one test done to them. Mm -hmm. So for the people that didn't uh, take the test, you said there was no disciplinary action or anything, but were they like moved to a certain um, area in DOC to work or reassigned somewhere? No, no, no. Nobody was sanctioned. Again, the whole thing on the test is that no one was showing symptoms. It mm -hmm. was just a precautionary measure. No one was, if they were showing symptoms and other things, it would have been a little bit different, but uh, they wouldn't even have been allowed to work. But no one was showing symptoms. It was just a 100 you know, the director's plan was to just test everybody. And then our next step is the inmates. Now, you know, will some of the inmates refuse? It's possible. It's possible some may refuse, but we try to explain the importance of it, uh, especially if we want to start getting visitation going. Mm. You know, we want to start setting up some kind of visitation down the road. We need to know where we stand. Mm -hmm. We need to know where we're at right now. And so uh, that's why we're going to be moving into the next phase. Mm -hmm. Do Even though make it clear that at this time no inmate has shown any symptoms uh, to date of any kind of uh, COVID related illness. Mm -hmm. What did the officers, uh, what were the reasons the officers uh, said that they just didn't want to take the test? Well, some of those may not want to take it just to, just to, it's a medical procedure, right? And they just didn't feel comfortable taking it. Mm -hmm. uh, some were worried about, you know, the process and, mm. you know, I mean, even me, when I saw the, the swab, I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, <coughs> You know, I didn't want to take it either, but I sat through it. Um, no one, like I said, no one's really uh, expressed an uh, uh, objection yeah. to a certain degree. I mean, yeah, uh, Major, standby, standby, Major. Thank, thank you, ma'am, so much for the call. Okay, are you satisfied with the answer? Uh, yes, I, I just want to commend the uh, DOC, the director and major, for for directing or for making the decision to test the employees because I know of employers and other agencies who have known that their employees tested positive and kind of just left it for the employees to decide whether they want to get tested or not. And, you know, I, I just like the, 
I commend you for the precautionary action you're taking to protect your employees. Which Thank agencies, you so ma'am, are you talking about? Um, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Give us a hint. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. so we There's can look been into on it. The news lately. <laughs> on the Don't news lately, that. DOE. I'm sorry. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is that a good guess? Or <laughs> <laughs> You're always a good guesser. <laughs> uh, Major, so you mean to tell me that those big, bad corrections officers with all the tattoos and they're just like, their <laughs> sleeves are about to bust because of that bicep game? You mean to tell me these guys who have on average about 70 pounds of tribal tattoos on their body? You mean to tell me that they're scared of a Q-tip going up their nose? Oh, my God. Most of them took the test, but again, you see that Q-tip, it, it would, uh, you know. Size does matter. Right? When you see that Q-tip, you're like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Describe the process, uh, Major, because, um, yeah, people wonder you about it. not get arrested it, anytime soon. <laughs> it's one of those questions that we always get about, how was it taking the test? So how was it uh, to take it for Major Anton Ogden? Well, it was, um, it was an experience when the nurse explained to me and showed me the long Q-tip swab they're going to use. I was like, are you going to clean my ears with that too? Because that's pretty long. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but it went up and it, it, I got teary a little bit. It, it uh, you know, but you have to hold it still. Uh, mm-hmm. We had one, uh, our other major, I think they took it and they're putting it in the container and it dropped. Oh no. So, they had, so she unfortunately had to go through it twice. <laughs> and so that, and- was, uh, that was an unfortunate there event, mm-hmm. but. Uh, Hi, Dick. I'm happy I took it. I'm happy I took it because I know that I, I didn't have it at that time and my family doesn't have it and right. I don't I'm not capable of spreading it here at work, so mm-hmm. I just maintain all the other precautions that we're still doing. What about right the now, I'm by myself here in the office. So. Right. Um uh, major, you said testing inmates is next. What's the timeline on that? Well, sir, uh we're looking at doing it before the week's over. Before the week's over. Yeah. So it took three hours for the 190 um, staff, so that's 600. So that's probably going to take, what, two days or something? Well, we're looking or at it's like a whole day. Uh, Manila might be one day, or or depending on how many we get to Manila at a time, it could be two days in Manila and one in Ganya. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, uh, GMH is coming in today. Uh, they're sending about almost a dozen nurses here tomorrow, or, or when it takes place. And uh, so we're going to try to move it as fast as we can and, and uh, again, just take it from there and evaluate the operation mm-hmm. and see you know, how we can improve it and make it work faster. It's our first time ever doing something like this. So, right. yeah. so just real quickly, in lieu of not having those rapid test kits, um, how are you guys dealing with uh, the overnighters that are coming in and, and trying to minimize uh, exposure because you don't know whether they could or could not have uh, COVID-19? What, it, what are you guys doing? What kind of precautions are you taking to ensure everybody over there at the Agatnia lockup to include staff are uh, are uh, safe? Well, all the staff are, are wearing masks. They're given masks and uh, so is the overnighters. And you can see on some of the mug shots, some will have their masks around their necks. So they're all being issued a mask. Oh, okay. They are putting in a in an isolated area. Again, you know, considering our space and, and the, the population, it is a challenge, but we do separate them from the, the inmates that's been there for a while, right? So they're there and they're seen by medical staff and their temperature is taken daily, sometimes twice a day, just to ensure that, you know, no fever or nothing happens. And, uh, you know, we're just we're just being diligent on that. And so, so far, so good. I mean, we've made, made, been able to manage it and hopefully once we have the other testing and we're able to test them as they come in, that, that'll be better for our operations. But, uh, you know, for now, we're just we're doing the best we can of what we have. And, uh, you know. Okay. Well, well, thanks a lot, Anton. Uh, I guess we'll check in with you uh, maybe tomorrow or later on this afternoon about when uh, you guys begin testing uh, inmates and detainees over at Mingi Lao and Agania. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time and uh, stay safe. Okay. Thank Th- you. Thank you, Major. Uh, wash your hands. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Seven oh seven. Good morning. It's the link on the breeze, 93.9. Uh, yeah, so we'll be sure to ask Lillian Posadas of the Guam Mor- Memorial Hospital about uh, that testing effort. Uh, it's kind of interesting that we can't have a community mass testing because